Good morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. And what we're going to make today is a folding pot stand that you can put over the fire, put your pot or your skillet on to cook above the bed of the coals without necessarily having to have a grate. This is kind of a folding pot grate of sorts, but it's based on a ancient design. And I want to show it to you today. The first thing we have to do to make this is we have to forge weld a link. Forge welding chain links is a great way to practice your forge welding techniques. And I am by no means an expert in forge welding. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. But I generally try to forge weld high carbon steel. And that's part of the reason that I'm not as successful probably as I could be. Because it's easier to start learning, I think, with the lower carbon type steels from what I'm told. So we're using rebar for this project. And we're gonna make one circle about four inches in diameter. And then we're going to weld that circle together. Stay with me, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to put a slight chamfer right in the front of this. Because we're making a scarf joint right there. It's gonna overlap on another. Get that nice and flattened out like that. And then we're going to start bending it this direction, okay? When we get heated up. I'm drawing a line on here so I know where to stay with my link. That's about how big around I want it to end up. Once we've got our circle overlapping right here like this, now we know we've got the initial part of what we want. We've got to cut this to make another lap joint. So I'm going to open that up just a little bit on a bending fork. And I'm going to cut this thing off about right here. So we got to heat it up. Okay, so the next piece of the puzzle here is to clean everything up real good, first of all. Get our scarf joint on this side. Now we're ready to kind of form the ring pre-welding and start to flux. So let's get that heated up again real quick. And we'll get our initial ring formed the way we want it. And then we'll get ready to weld it and we'll talk about that. Now if we got any imperfections in here, we can straighten those out after we weld it. It's not that big of a deal. I do want to spread that thing out just a little bit. with a chisel while it's hot. That, so I can get in there and clean it. It's really important that these surfaces be clean inside here. And then I'm gonna put them a little closer together here. Heat it up just to shade. This time we're gonna flux. Fluxing is just going to get rid of all the impurities on the surface of the metal that puddles up on there and washes all the slag and things like that off. And borax, just 20 mule team borax from the grocery store is one of the best things you can use for flux. 
You can buy things like this sure weld, and I use it sometimes too. It works pretty good. But just a box of this old 20 mule team borax works really well. I like to have all the tools I'm going to use pretty close to at hand when I'm doing this stuff. So I've got the borax right here below me. I'm putting it on over the top of the box so that any that doesn't go in the weld goes in the box. It allows me to put an ample amount on there without having to worry about wasting much of it. Now this is basically just my cleaning step, my final cleaning step on the weld to make sure on the areas to be welded to make sure that everything is nice and crisp and clean. And then we're going to change our forge around a little bit. I'll show you that and get that white hot welding heat. So you can see right now that that's pretty much just yellow heat in there. There's really nothing that I would consider white hot heat. It's just yellow. And that will work fine for heating this stuff up to where I want it to get all the slag and all that stuff off of it. When I get ready to weld, I'm going to bank this up a little bit better, break up some of this coke because it will burn really, really hot, drop it to the center area of the torrent there, and it'll get white hot. And you'll see what that looks like when we get ready to do it here in just a minute. Okay, so now I'm just scrubbing off all that initial flux. And you can see a big difference in what that metal looks like already in the area that you flux. It looks a lot smoother. And that makes a big difference. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pound this thing just a tad closer together like that. And we're going to flux it again. Alright, so now I'm trying to build up welding heat. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking some of this coke stuff off and dropping it down the bottom just like this and then I'm going to begin to bank the edges of this thing up to hold the heat in just like a campfire really I mean the higher you are got a bank around that thing the more heat's going to be concentrated in one area and that's really what we're trying to do is concentrate all the heat into the center of this thing for this forge well and down in there you can see down inside there, there are some spots that are just bone white down in here. That's what you're looking for for welding heat. That stuff right in there. We're going to put this right on the edge of it for a minute so that we can flux it again and then we're going to get her in there. Alright, so we've put borax on here again and now I'm going to stick that thing right down in that white hot heat. Don't worry too much about getting particles in there. Don't worry so much about that. A lot of people get oversensitive about that, I think. Move stuff out of your way. Get that thing down in the white hot. Now we may have to move this thing around a couple of times in here to get what we want. I'm trying to get you the best camera angle I can on this. I'm going to have to pull it out for a forge weld. You're not going to see it forge weld on the anvil because I can't film two things at one time. I rotate this thing in the fire down there in that white because both of those pieces of metal need to be the same color and they need to be almost at a melting point where they're almost throwing sparks right before you weld them. But I wanted to show you the heat that you were looking for there is that white heat down there in the bottom. That's what you want. So you can see that really hot spot right, oh man, right there. That's what you're looking for. If you can get that thing in there, it won't take any time to get that thing up the welding heat. And it's throwing sparks. It's ready to go. here that lip that I said I wasn't worried about that didn't weld and that's the only place that didn't weld right there I'm gonna heat that thing up one more time and see if I can concentrate one blow right there and get that to the heater other than that I think we're welding
to you. That's a nice solid weld. Now, we just need to kind of get our piece shape back into a circle again. We have a solid weld now, for sure. No doubt about it. Now we want that thing to look like a circle again because it's a little out of round there. We're going to have to heat that area up and get it to bend. All right, so now we're just trying to get this thing cleaned up, get everything evened up. Everything the same thickness. Get this thing back to a semi-circle of some kind here if we can. That's not too awful shabby. It ain't perfect by any means, but it ain't too awful ugly. I need to heat this up and bend it in just a shade, possibly. Okay, so I'm pretty happy now with the circle itself. A little bit off here and there. It could be thinned down just a little bit right there still yet. I popped in a couple times with the hammer while I'm standing here. And she's warm. Still shape metal when it's cool if you're careful about it and you know you've had to heat it up several times. Okay. Now, now this is our four inch circle. Now we're going to make three legs that basically will fold up on this thing. Alright, this was the difficult part and the time consuming part was making this out of room. I know that I want my stand to sit about ten inches above the base of my fire. Maybe eight. But I've got to give myself some room to stick it in the ground, so we're going to go with ten. And we need to roll it over, so we're going to go with eleven. All right? So each one of our legs, even after it's pounded out, we want to be eleven inches long. So I'm just going to make a mark on the angle here at eleven, so that we know how long each leg is supposed to be. Okay, so when we're finished, what we have is basically a folding pot stand or a cooling rack. You have three stakes around a forge welded circle. That's about four inches. And you can set your bucket on top of that. If you were cooling water down, you didn't want to set it on the ground, or maybe you wanted to put it on top of this because you didn't have a way to hang it and you wanted to cook under it, you can also do that. Or you could put a small skillet on top of this as well. And then when you're ready to take off, you just pull it out of the ground and everything folds flat so that you can pack it. And then when you get ready to set it up again, you just spread it out, pound the stakes in the ground, and you're ready okay, to go. So when you're ready to set this thing up, you just come in here, and there's one stake that's a little bit longer than the other two. And I just put it in the ground at about a 45 degree angle, get the other stakes out of my way, put that one in the ground, find a location for the other two, and spread them out a little bit, about like this. You want that thing up on the same angle, basically, as that stake is when you get ready to put it in the ground. And as you pound these down, it'll flatten out and pull on that circle to give you that stability that you're looking for. Just like that. 
I appreciate you guys joining me out here for this video today. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your views. I thank you for everything you do for my school, for my family, for my business, for all my sponsors, instructors, affiliate, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.